welcome back to The Greater You. Always good to spend some time with you all and to give you some light and some ideas and some inspiration and some thoughts that will hopefully help you better your life and improve the path that you're on. We're committed to that at The Greater You. So let's take a look. Today's share, you've got the cycle. This is an old cycle that's been known for many, many years this is the cycle of addiction. And we wanted to talk about this. This can really come into any unwanted behavior that is interfering with our happiness and our joy. So first of all, a definition of addictive behavior versus just a, a habit, right? So habits, we hopefully have all kinds of habits, right? We brush our teeth, we shower, we've got habits there. Hopefully we've got habits built around exercise and nutrition. There's lots of different habits in our lives. When does a habit become an addiction? It's one of the main factors there is the interference, right? So if the behavior is interfering with your wellness, your well being, your relationships, your work, your life. So, you know, say you've got a video game that you play on the regular and you start finding yourself thinking about it too much. And you find yourself planning your day around it and you find yourself planning your life around it. It's probably starting to interfere. Um, if you have a substance that you find yourself longing and craving for, and it's starting to interfere with relationships, with focus, with uh, doing other things, with your finances, with your budget, then you may have a budding addiction or problem coming up. So Interference is a major factor or measure of is a habit a problem or not. Then you add in this other factor, which is, is this behavior pattern destructive or hurtful to yourself or others, right? So that one of the key differences between a habit and an addiction is that addictives, addictive behaviors and addictive actions and habits have self-destructive or harmful tendencies. Drinking too much harms the body. Uh, scrolling on Instagram for hours on end harms your brain and probably hurts your ability to be productive, probably harms your focus. So there's lots of things to kind of take into account there, but what kind of harm is the behavior doing? Is it causing not only interference in my life, but is it harming myself? Now, clearly, if it's harming others, too, that's another factor. If you have an addictive behavior that's harming your primary relationships or harming your ability to do your work or, you know, or to follow through on commitments to other people and other you know, important activities, then we've got a problem, right? So take a look in your life and ask yourself, are there unwanted behaviors that are starting or fully acting like an addiction? Certainly our entire, you know, kind of like our, our social media world and our technology world and in the gaming world and a lot of these things, even like the, the you know, streaming services that you have, um, digital streaming services for television and stuff like that. A lot of those are really set up now by very smart people to have a strong reinforcement schedule to keep you using their product, right? Remember that that's because someone is trying to make money. And if they have a captive audience, they have more money going into their pockets. So there's definitely an insidious underbelly to certain industries that are preying upon the fact that the human brain is prone to habits and that those habits can be morphed into addictions. If you're always going, I mean, think about like the tobacco industry, right? Uh, one of the worst things that's ever been invented is the vaping industry because no longer does it smell bad. It smells good, right? And it's not as uh, intrusive as a cigarette, right? You can, you know, have hit a take a hit off a vape and blow it up your sleeve. That we see teenagers do that, and it kind of just disappears. Maybe people get a slight aroma of strawberries. How insidious can you get? 
that is so destructive. But then the nicotine levels and all of the crazy chemistry that goes into these things are insanely habit forming. And then they've got a captive, you know, enslaved, you know, money, a uh, uh, money bag for them, right? That you, you're going to keep going back and you're going to keep buying vapes and your cartridges for it and all the things. And you're just lining the pockets as your health diminishes. You're lining the pockets of someone who probably doesn't even use their own product. And they're sitting back and they're making a ton of money. So think deeply about this uh, in the video game industry. You know, and I grew up, I'm a Gen Xer. You know, we all, we basically invented half the video games you guys are playing, right? The people in my, in my, um, you know, generation, right? There's a lot of really ugly behavior going on there. The microtransactions are very addictive to people that are playing these games of all ages. They always have like a coin store where you can buy things. And you can spend real money on pretend things. It's easy to fall victim to that, right? And these, these microtransactions build up and your bank accounts get drained. Um, so very insidious behavior there too. And it's a money-making scheme that creates a habit that becomes addictive. And you just got to get the next thing and the next you know, cosmetic or the next achievement, right? So... You have to weigh everything on a scale, right? Um, I think that certain behaviors, obviously illicit drugs uh, are gonna just be destructive. I know that there's a lot of people that are trying to champion certain drugs as healthy or helpful, and that's just not true. Unhealthy drugs are unhealthy drugs. Uh, too much alcohol is too much alcohol, right? Um, you know, we're pretty, we're pretty adamant about that over here in the greater you that whatever it is that's preying upon your happiness and your well-being, that is shackling you to it and making it so you can't think for yourself and your behavior is acting addictive, those things need to go. They need to be faced head on and you need to go through and get some work. Now, clearly there is a little caveat here. The greater you is based mostly in life coaching. I'm also a licensed counselor myself. And we do have some counselors that we refer people out to when it comes to, you know, addictions around, especially things like drugs and alcohol. It is very wise to have a licensed professional on your team of people that are helping you overcome that problem with your addiction. Coaches definitely can help. They can help with accountability. They can help with mindset mindset. They can help you with skill and tool acquisition, but you need to have a licensed professional to help you in it. And we also are big fans of 12-step programs. We've seen them help and save many people's lives over many, many years of working in the human service industry. I'm a huge fan of various forms of 12-step programs. There are great other uh, options out there like Rational Recovery. Those are great programs. Uh, me, myself, personally, I love 12-step. I think it taps into the spiritual power that does create major life change for people. And it creates community, too, and it creates accountability and creates an ownership uh, of, of our problems and helps us to overcome them in a group environment with other people that are also working hard to get and stay sober. So let's look at this pattern. So you've got you know, a number of bubbles here, that pre-contemplation at the top there is really when we're just not even really aware. We're kind of unaware that we're unaware that we've got a problem going on. Usually people around the person with the addictive behavior are starting to say something. They're like, hey, like, really? Do you need another drink? Like, hey, shouldn't you stop? Pay attention to that because you might have something going on in your life there that needs to be paid attention to. People don't change when they're pre-contemplative. Pre the change process happens when awareness occurs and we start moving into that contemplation phase, that next circle over. We're aware that there's a problem and we need to make some commitments to start taking action. In the contemplation phase, it's very important that we start opening up and talking to people, getting professional help if we need it, um, and getting a support team built around us so that we can start really breaking out of whatever that addiction is. And also you've got to start seeking knowledge 
you know, read up on ways that have worked for people. There's lots of great books out there, lots of great programs that can help with various types of addictions. Start doing your homework and amassing that knowledge base, which leads you into the preparation. We're intent on taking action here. We're, our, we're, our intention is starting to line up. We're ready to start moving. We're gathering information. We're getting resources. We're telling family and friends. Always tell family and friends. One of the number one tools for overcoming addictions is to get honest with yourself and your loved ones that you have a problem. Overcoming that shame cycle of trying to hide addictive behaviors and breaking out into that freedom of honesty is a massive thing that moves people towards recovery. So prepare yourself take to get that action in place, set the stage and do whatever you've got to do to move into action, which is that next circle here. We're actually moving on taking action and putting behaviors in place. So let's give an example. If a person was struggling with alcohol and they went through those first three bubbles and they're like building a support team, maybe they're hitting 12 steps, they've got a sponsored AA. They're starting to take action by going to those meetings on a regular basis and actually working the steps, doing their journaling and doing the process of facing whatever it is that you've been hiding from. Addictive behaviors usually are some sort of compensation for something else that's missing in your life. If we have a need to alter the state of our minds by putting chemistry in there or stimulation that's kind of artificial all the time, something is out of balance and you need to take a look at what that may be. So for instance, in taking action, not only would maybe someone go to 12 step, but then they would add in other positive coping behaviors to take action on that take the place of the addictive behavior. Maybe they pick up running, maybe they pick up journaling, maybe they pick up, you know, a musical instrument. Maybe they, you know, start hitting 12 step meetings every single day. Maybe they start going back to some sort of worship service. Maybe they get heavily involved in, you know, a yoga community or a supportive uh, wealth, uh, well-being community of some sort that's supportive. Whatever it is, you start reading, you start writing. We start taking action on positive well-being behaviors that replace the addiction. Which then over time, you know, a couple of months, the only research I've seen that's really held any water on habit creation is like 60 days to start really cementing a habit. But here's the trick to habits. The moment you stop doing it, the habit will begin to, to diminish. So to, in order to keep habits going, new ha healthy habits, we've got to have repetition over time with a lot of commitment to it. it needs to be scheduled into the calendar. You've got to have a plan of action that can become a maintenance plan. Oh, I hit up my AA meetings every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and you do it religiously like clockwork, right? Oh, I go for a run every Tuesday, Thursday at, you know, 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. or whatever works for your schedule. And you do that. I journal every night at 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. Getting structure in that action to maintenance phase helps you build the habits that are going to replace the addictive behavior. Now let's look at that scary circle called relapse. So maintenance is obviously sustained change like we talked about and getting those new habits in place. The relapse is a scary thing and it happens all too frequently. I like to educate people on the difference between a slip and a relapse. The word relapse is like really falling back into it. There should really be another sphere on this with this says slip. If you say, for instance, a person has a problem with pornography and they're trying to get clean and sober from that, and they're like six months sober, and then they see something weird online, they get slammed by some stupid video, and they linger too long. They're like looking at this thing too long before they shut it off. That's really a slip. That's not a full relapse, right? Um, a relapse would be like, hey, yeah, you know, you're going back into the bar and I'm spending the whole evening in the bar and just getting completely toasted and and falling into the old patterns, right? But whether it's a slip, which is ten, tends to be smaller, or a relapse, the goal is to get back to your maintenance plan, right? The goal is to break this cycle and not go back into that 
unaware stage of pre-contemplation. If we stay in a relapse too long, you'll go numb. And when you go numb, you go back into that pre-contemplation and then we're going back round and round. The way you break out of a relapse is you go back to your action and your maintenance phase. Go back to any of that information that worked for you. Go back to the habits that were working until this moment of weakness. Go back to it. Go back to your 12-step group and let them know, dude, I had a rough night, had a rough thing happen at work, and I ended up in the bar when I should have been hanging out with my family and friends or hanging out with you guys in 12-step, right? So you go back to the thing that's on your maintenance plan, and then that will get you going again and uh, and bring you back around. So that's a little overview of the cycle of addiction. And clearly the goal, like that centerpiece, the upward spiral is to learn from this whole process, break out of relapse and become free of any addictive behavior pattern that is holding you back from your peak potential. So like this video if you liked it. We'd love to hear your comments in the comment section below about how you're doing in your own journey to break unwanted habits and to build good, healthy habits and message us if you need some help with accountability and definitely get a professional help if you have a professional level problem like an addiction with alcohol or substances or something severe, a gambling or pornography, anything like that that can be so destructive. So there is always hope. There is a lot of professionals that know how to help people and have committed their entire professions and lives helping you overcome your addictions. And we're part of that. Us at The Greater You are committed to helping you become free of any of those shackles. Thank you so much for your time and we'll talk again soon.